everyone. I hope you're doing really well. It has been a while. I did not intend on being away from YouTube for so long. I think the last video I posted here was way back in February, which feels kind of crazy. But every time I thought about sitting down and filming again, life just happened. It has been a really busy year. I've been pulled in so many different directions this year. I'm not even sure how to explain it. It's just been one of those years where I've had to kind of step back, slow down, reassess how I spend some of my time. And it's taken me quite a few months to kind of get back into a good groove and feel organized again. And I think when September hit this year, I really felt the sense of like a fresh start. It felt like the beginning of a new year for me, kind of that whole back to school vibe. Even though I am well past the age of going back to school, I tend to love a fresh start in September. And I meant to come back here a few weeks ago, but again, life happened. I twisted my knee and I could barely walk for a couple of weeks. Um, Glenn and I got sick and had to isolate for like a week and a half. So more roadblocks, but I am finally back. It is a beautiful fall day. It's October. I've got the windows open. It's a little bit noisy. I can hear people doing some gardening work or outdoor work, but I am just so excited to be back and start sharing a few things with you guys. I haven't been completely MIA since February. I am still on Instagram. I actually started making some TikTok videos, which I've been really enjoying. I love just taking little snippets of a video here and there and sharing little outings or corners of my home or something I'm making in the kitchen. So I will leave some of the links to other places that you can find me down below because I am still around on Instagram, TikTok. I do film weekly videos for Patreon, which is quite time consuming as well. So I will leave links to all of those different places down below. I'm also on Ravelry, I'm on Goodreads. Just check down below and you can find me all over the place. But today I am back with some knitting to share with you because I haven't really been knitting much this year and I am super excited to finally be back into loving the process of knitting and incorporating more knitting in my daily life. I think I had a couple of projects going in January and February, but when March came and then spring started to arrive, I don't know what happened. I was just really distracted and I did not enjoy knitting at all. I stopped journaling, I stopped knitting, and it's taken me a while, but I feel like after starting a few projects, ripping them out, I did a huge de-stash recently on Instagram. I feel like I've been purging and cleaning up and just creating a little bit more mental space for new things. I am finally loving a couple of my knitting projects and I've gathered them. I wanna share those with you. And also at the very last minute, in typical Sandy fashion, I've decided that I am going to attend the Rhinebeck Sheep and Wool Festival this week or next week. And I am so excited about it. I feel like it was kind of the start to some of this inspiration to get back into carving out more creative time to make things again, just quiet time. Instead of always picking up my Kindle or a book, I really want to be using my hands again and I am so excited that I have convinced my family the boys will be coming with me next week. We are going to make a really nice fall weekend getaway out of it and I just cannot wait. I haven't been to Rhinebeck in years, I think maybe four years ago was the last time that I went. So I'm really excited about it. I have been super inspired. I've been trying to keep my projects to a minimum so I don't overwhelm myself. And so far it's been going really well. I've gathered my projects. I'm gonna share some whips with you, some dream knitting. I have a couple of favorite things that I wanna share with you guys. I've got some shop news 
And I think at the end of this video, I'm also going to share a little outing that I had with a couple of my friends in August. It was right at the end of August. Um, some of my journaling friends and I met up downtown in Toronto and spent the day just wandering some stationery shops, enjoying some good food. It was a really beautiful day. I had such a great time and I feel like it was one of the things that kind of forced me to slow down from all of the busyness of life yet again and kind of focus on the things that make me really happy, the crafty things, the creative things. And since then, I have been slowly carving out more time, which is why I'm here with you today. So I'm going to finish gathering a few things to share with you and pull out that knitting. Let's talk knitting. I haven't shared my projects like this in a long time, so please bear with me. I have gathered my three current whips that I'm absolutely in love with, and I feel like they have reignited my passion for knitting. And in this long break from knitting in the past year that I've taken, I haven't really been watching knitting podcasts on YouTube. I haven't been on social media quite as much as I used to be. I just haven't been absorbing as much inspiration online, which is a break I think I really, really needed. As much as I love social media and I love gathering inspiration from all over the place, I think I really just needed to take a step back, kind of clear my mind and figure out what I wanted to knit for myself and just get back into some projects that brought me joy without any of that outside noise. And I think I have finally landed in a good place and I wanted to share these projects with you. I've got them all in my current favorite bags, which are leather bunny bags. This is in the color Merlot. And this first whip that I wanted to share with you is one that I have started and stopped and ripped out and restarted a couple of times. And I am finally on track with it. It is the Saturday Shrug by Jackie Rose. It is a beautiful shrug that you can use different weights of yarn with, play around with color, and it is absolutely stunning. It is the perfect kind of project for so many people, but especially me. I just feel like it is my kind of project, which is probably the same for everyone that has been knitting it because there are so many beautiful versions of it. I will recommend checking out the hashtags on Instagram for the Saturday Shrug or the Saturday Shrug Club because it is super, super inspiring to see all of the different beautiful versions of it. So it is called the Saturday Shrug Recipe by Jackie Rose. It is the version that I am doing. You can do it in so many different ways. I think there's also one called the Sunday Shrug. Um, but the version that I am doing is a worsted weight yarn held together with an alpaca silk or a mohair or fingering. And this is what mine looks like so far. I am in love with this knit. It is very relaxing. It is kind of therapeutic. And I love being able to change the yarns. And this color combination is everything to me. This was actually a mystery kit that I purchased from the Lamb and Kid. I did put in a couple of notes of guidelines of the types of colors that I liked and one or two colors that I was not interested in. And they fulfilled my dreams beyond imagination. So the yarn that I have is the Lamb and Kid Todd Worsted Weight Yarn held together with their Birdie Base, which is a light fingering alpaca silk blend. And I don't know which is which, but the colors that I have for the Todd Worsted, which is a yak and cashmere blend, are in Piquant, which I think is this one, and in Juno, which I think is the blue. I think they are so beautiful together. 
along with the birdie base in colors, let's see. I think one of them is called Counting Sheep and one of them is called Fandango. I really, really am enjoying this project. Everything about it, it is making the most beautiful plush fabric. It's squishy, it is not itchy at all, it is soft. And I'm so excited to incorporate this into my fall wardrobe. I'm being very ambitious and kind of hoping that I can complete this by Saturday. Today is Sunday, I know that is a big ask, but I have a lot of time this week that I'm planning on devoting to knitting this and it does knit up quite quickly. It is a really squishy one by one rib. It's kind of like a potato chip project where you can sit on the couch and do other things. I do try to read while knitting, but it's not really my thing. But I also have a long drive to Rhinebeck on Thursday, which I think will be mostly devoted to working on this project. So I really, really love it. I'm so happy with how it's turning out. And I'm actually planning on making another one after this. I already have some yarn. I'll share that a little bit later in my dream knitting segment. But for now, this is the main project that I am working on most days and will be every day this week because I really want it to be my Rhinebeck knit. So that is the first whip. The second whip that I'm working on is a DK weight sock, which I have consistently kind of worked on here and there throughout this year. It's the one project that I always go back to. I really enjoy working on DK socks. And when I decided that I'd be going to Rhinebeck this year, I just thought I had to pull out a sock project. This one is very close to being completed and so it's possible that I could have this sock for Rhinebeck as well. It is in another leather bunny bag. This is in the color Mustard. And the pattern that I'm using for this sock is the DK Weight Vanilla Socks by Crazy Sock Lady Designs, which is Kay Litton. And it is using one of my favorite sock yarns from Legacy Fiber Arts, which is their DK Weight Sock Yarn. And this is in the color After Dinner Mint. I love it. And I just made a shorty version of this. It is perfect with like an ankle boot for fall. I love this colorway. I love the hand feel of it. This is a superwash merino nylon. And I've got one sock done. And I had the heel flap done when I decided to pull it out the other day. And I just started working on the heel turn. So once I get that turn done and knit the gusset, it will be smooth sailing. I think it will be super fast to knit up the foot. And I'm pretty sure I can have this done while I'm in Rhinebeck. It is so much fun working on DK weight socks. The needles that I really love using for this are, I believe they're Knit Pro Zings. They are DPNs. And these are in the size US 3 or 3.25 millimeter. And I did want to share one of my um, favorite ways to kind of store sock knitting notions. I just have one of my flat pouches that I kind of move around the house when I need it or keep stocked up in my sewing room here. And in this pouch, I keep a few of the major essentials that I need for sock knitting if I want to cast on a new sock, if I need some stitch markers. I've got a little container in here with a whole bunch of progress keepers and stitch markers. I've got a little notebook. I've got a copy of the pattern that I use for my fingering weight or favorite fingering weight sock pattern, which is the How I Make My Socks recipe from Susan B. Anderson. 
And one of the things I really wanted to share was this cute little pouch that I got many, many years ago from, I think it was from Shop Luli on Etsy. And I really love it because it is the perfect size to keep a whole bunch of DPN needles in here. And these are most of my Knit Pro Zings that I've collected over the years. I really just love this little pouch and I like keeping it in my flat pouch. And then I also just keep a measuring tape, a pen, oops, which came apart. And I've even got a little needle cozy in here. So I just like to keep a few things on hand to grab quickly that I can take with me if I'm going somewhere. Like this would be the perfect pouch to bring to, um, to Rhinebeck or on a road trip because if you want to start a new pair of socks, you've got everything you need in one little pouch. So I've been really excited to get back into some sock knitting. I have not wanted to knit socks for a while, but when I pull out DK weight socks, I feel like it is not so overwhelming. A fingering weight sock it's very time consuming for me. It's just a lot of stitches on the needle and DK weight socks fly off the needles for me. And I really, I think I actually prefer the fabric that they knit up for wearing on your feet. They're just a little bit more plush and comfortable for me than a fingering weight yarn sock. In this bunny bag, I also have, oh, I have this cute little Katrinkle's Kitchener Stitch recipe on here. This one was from Espace Tricot. I like to keep that on hand, but I also have another DK weight sock yarn in here from Legacy Fiber Arts because I have another one started. I think I started this on Halloween last year and then just put it away and forgot about it. But because these are so quick to knit up and I really do enjoy a shorty version of this sock, this will be another one that I could easily start this fall and I think have another pair this winter. This particular colorway is called Portal and I really love Legacy Fiber Arts sock yarn in the nylon weight. It is a four ply DK weight 7525 superwash merino nylon. So it does have that nylon content in there to make them durable, and just really nice. I find they don't sag on my feet. Sometimes socks can get stretched out and there isn't like a good give to them, but these have such a beautiful weight and drape. I really, really love this yarn. So I've got this yarn and this started sock in this pouch just in case, because you never know if this one will get finished and I will be looking for another one to work on and I already have one cast on. So this is my little bunny bag with my current sock projects, but I'm really just focusing on the second sock of the after dinner mints color at the moment. My third whip is in my rose gold metallic bunny bag. And this is, I think the project that kind of got me back into knitting a few weeks ago but it has been put on the back burner because I really want those other two projects for Rhinebeck. But this project is something that I've been wanting to cast on for a little while. It's one of my favorite hat patterns. It is called On the Sea Train. It's a pattern, a free pattern from Espace Tricot. And I do have one of these made in a really beautiful gray yarn which I don't have with me at the moment. But I picked up a couple of colorways of yarns from the Knitting Loft last year, or maybe it was just earlier this year, because I knew I wanted to make more of these hats for the coming winter. And it was kind of what got me back into knitting again. We were away for soccer one weekend. I packed up this project and I really, really love it. I think what makes this project for me is that it's a really simple hat pattern in a one by one rib. So it's very sleek, it's a beautiful fit, and I really love 
the yarns recommended and that I'm using. Here's the color combination I have right now. There is just something about this yarn that I love so much. It is Wool Folk Far, which is a worsted weight yarn in kind of like a chainette. It's really beautiful. And the color I have is this beautiful peachy colorway and it's number 35. And along with that, I have this beautiful Melted Baby Surrey, which is a Surrey wool silk blend from this brand. I'm not sure if you say Ching, but it's Q-I-N-G Fiber. And the color of this is Lemonade. And I just think that together, they make the most squishy, soft, luxurious fabric for a hat. And I cannot wait. This is going to be for me. I am really looking forward to finishing this one up so that I can wear it when it gets really cold here in the winter. It's just a beautiful pattern. I have come to realize that the patterns I gravitate most to and want to finish are ones that are really simple and classic. Um, I do love all kinds of patterns, but the ones that I know I will wear are usually simpler ones. And this is one of those ones. I think it's possibly, it's one of my top three hat patterns. I really, really love it. And so that is my third whip. I am going to sort of put it on the back burner until those other ones are done. But as soon as those, um, as soon as my Saturday shrug and my socks are done, this is going to be the next project that I focus on knitting. And in there, I even have a little notions pouch. It's one of my patchwork pouches with all of my knitting notions. And I kind of just carry these around the house with me. Wherever I go, I have what I need. And I really, really love them. And these are also super easy to just toss in a bigger bag, which is why I love these bunny bags so much. So I do have some dream knitting. I'm going to pull out my iPad, pull out a couple of the, or pull up a couple of the patterns that I am really looking forward to later this fall, even though I'm just trying to slow down, focus on a couple at a time. I definitely have some dream knitting that I want to share with you. Let's talk about some dream knitting because I have a few projects that are lined up for the coming weeks and months. I am really trying to use my stash and just work from the yarn that I already have in my collection that is there for a reason. I fell in love with it. I still love it. I recently did a really big de-stash to kind of share some of the yarns that I don't think I'll be getting a chance to use, but there are still so many beautiful things in my collection that would make beautiful garments and accessories. One of the things that I don't have yarn for at the moment is the Cozy Cardi, which is a beautiful, somewhat new release from Shayna Below that I discovered through Christina of Chelsea Yarns. It is a really pretty cardigan that I think would just work beautifully in my wardrobe. I really love the silhouette of this. I just love the simplicity of it. I really like how it showcases a beautiful hand-dyed yarn. And so I'm looking forward to casting on one of these in the next few weeks. That might be my next bigger project. It's so beautiful. I do have another combination for the On the Sea Train hat. This is the actual hat that I made quite a few years ago. It is just really simple and easy to wear and comfortable. I love how it looks on me. And once I finish that peachy version, I have another one ready to go. I also purchased this yarn from The Knitting Loft. It's another skein of Wool Folk Far. This color is number 14. It's a beautiful deep turquoise and then I have this really pretty mohair to go with it. It's from Bichet Bouche. 
It's Silk Mohair, and this color is blue-green. So I think that will make a really nice on the sea train hat. And this is going to be my next Saturday shrug. This one might be called the Sunday shrug. I can't remember. I know there are a couple of variations and variations on the name. But this was a kit from the Lamb and Kid that I treated myself to months and months ago. I purchased it before I'd even cast on my first one. I just knew that this color combination was for me. I think it's really fun and light and beautiful. I love a bit of rainbow action and pop colors. And I think this one is going to be stunning. It is going to be held with this really neutral uh, Big Birdie. So this is like a chunky this is called Monstro, the base. It is 100% fine merino wool. This color is Atomic. This was a kit, so it was already set up for me to purchase. Uh, this is called Florange. This one is called Taffy. This one is called Pop Rocks, which I know is a really popular color of theirs. And this gorgeous mint is called Chalet Chic. I don't know what combination I'll be knitting it in, if I will follow along with how they had theirs knit up or if I'll just play around with it, but it will be held together with this Big Birdie, which is an Aran weight baby alpaca silk. Um, beautiful yarn. And because it's a neutral color, it kind of just mutes out some of the brightness but it also um i think enhances it i think it's going to be a really beautiful big chunky shrug i cannot wait for this one i think it's going to be perfect worn over a jean shirt or a jean jacket and it's going to go perfectly in my wardrobe i love this color combo it was just one of those things when i saw it online i knew that even if i couldn't knit it right away or if I wasn't into knitting at the moment, I just didn't want to miss out on it because this is my kind of project. I think it will be so much fun to knit these colors. I'm really looking forward to it. I have a few more favorite things to share with you. Earlier in the week, I was at Bath & Body Works picking up some birthday gifts for a few people, and I spotted some candles that I thought would be perfect to store away for the coming months. I know I've shared this one before, but it is my all-time favorite scent from Bath & Body Works. It's the Marshmallow Fireside Candle. It just smells like marshmallows and campfire and it is so cozy i love having that burning all throughout the winter but i also saw this one for peppermint sugar cookie and i loved the green jar and the artwork on it so i picked up this one as well i feel like i am well stocked and prepared for fall and winter and I think I mentioned earlier that I have been reading a lot of books this year. So, so many books. And this series in particular has been one of my most favorite that I've read all year. And I love reading on my Kindle. I think I actually prefer reading on my Kindle. But if I love a book so very much and I know I want to read it again, I will purchase the hard copy. Space is a bit of an issue, but this series, I just had to have it and I've already read it twice. I wanted to share it with you because it is so good. It's called the Love Light Farms series from BK Borison. Right now, there are three books in the series. She is currently working on a fourth, which will not be available until next summer. But if you guys like the Gilmore Girls, if you like small town characters and a bit of romance, then these books are for you. The first one is called Love Light Farms. The second one is In the Weeds. And the third one is Mixed Signals. And the three main characters in these books are friends that purchase a Christmas tree farm together or run it together. Um, the woman in this one is the actual person that purchased Christmas tree farm 
The man in this one is the person that sort of takes care of the farm and the land. And then the woman main character in this one has a bake shop on the um, on Love Light Farms. And they are just the sweetest, most coziest books you could ever want for this time of year. I had to pull them out and read them again at the beginning of September because I just, I couldn't resist. This is such a good one. I would highly recommend. I just thought I would share them because I know I am always looking for good books to read that are not too heavy, not too serious, but also not too fluffy. And I really, really like these. This one in particular, um, I mean, I don't know if I could pick a favorite, but I feel like this one will suck you in. It is so good. The main characters in here are just amazing. They are friends. They've been friends for a really long time and they find their way to each other. But this one, there was something about this one that I really loved because the main character in it um, had some social anxiety and was sensitive to a lot of noise and things like that. And I just, I really liked the perspective. I really liked all of the characters, even the side characters in this little town that they're in. I think it's Inglewood. Oh my gosh, so funny, so just so cozy and warm and sweet. I just thought they were feel good reads with really nice stories and I loved every single one of them. I cannot wait for the fourth one. Um, the fourth one I think is going to be a lot of fun and um, I think it was kind of added in because people love the series so very much. But I would highly recommend them. They're by BK Borson. I also follow her on Instagram. She's kind of a fun person to follow. She posts some really cute videos. Um, it's just a really great series and it's perfect for this time of year. I'm pretty sure I've shared this cookbook before, but it is a current favorite of mine and I wanted to share it with you again. It's called Cake and Loaf by Nikki Miller and Josie Rutterham. Everything that I've made from this cookbook has been absolutely delicious. I think the first thing I made from here was a really good donut recipe on Thanksgiving one year. And I've made a few other things since then and every single one of them has been perfect. I am a huge lover of baking loaves, muffins, or very simple cakes. I don't like fussy baking, but I love having something sweet in the cake dome that you can grab for a quick on the go breakfast if you don't have time for something else or would make a really good afternoon treat or after school snack but could also be had with a tea or coffee for dessert at night and this book just has everything you could possibly want first of all i love that it is soft cover i don't know what it is about books like this they're kind of nostalgic for me, I know hardcover books are beautiful, but this just feels like a workhorse in the kitchen. And I recently pulled this off of my cookbook shelf and it's living on my countertop because I just want to make something from it every few days. And recently, I have been on a bit of a muffin mission. I love making muffins. I just feel like they are so handy. They're great for road trips. Um, they're great for a quick breakfast or snack. And I've been looking for some new recipes. I have quite a few muffin recipes that I've made year after year, but I wanted a couple of new ones to try. And so far, the ones in this book have been amazing. Earlier this week, I made mocha walnut crunch muffins. They were delicious. I really want to make these pumpkin coconut muffins next. I might actually make them early this week so I can pack them up in a big Tupperware and bring them on our road trip to Rhinebeck. But they've also got um, some really delicious looking scones, savory, sweet, and loaves, which is another favorite thing of mine to make. I just love having a sweet loaf in the cake dome. There's a lemon poppy seed loaf. I've made this carrot loaf with dreamy cream cheese icing and it's one of the best carrot cakes I've ever had. 
This banana chocolate chunk loaf also looks really delicious. There are lots of donut recipes in here that I still want to try. The ones that I made were these old fashioned chocolate baked donuts. They were so yummy. And we had a lot of fun dipping them in icing and using all kinds of different toppings. It's a really nice book. There are bars and cookies, so many good things to try. And it just felt like the perfect time of year to pull this out again and start making a few of the recipes that I've been wanting to. You can see I stopped putting sticky notes on the pages by this time because there were just so many things I wanted to try. I do love a good bar. These look really nice. These look delicious, turtle brownies. Classic fudge brownies. I love date bars. That would be really nice to make this fall. OMG bars. Oh, I love Nanaimo bars. It's a very Canadian treat. So lots and lots to make from here. I thought I would share because this is what I've been inspired by in the kitchen lately. I've been really into muffins and this book in particular has just given me a lot of ideas and um, inspiration because I feel like this is the time of year. I'm gearing up for the holidays. I'm not quite thinking about holiday baking just yet, but in Canada, we've already had our Thanksgiving weekend. And as soon as that passes, I start thinking about baking treats and what I might wanna bake for Halloween and in the weeks leading up to the holidays. And I think this book is going to be the perfect companion. It's staying in the kitchen with me at the moment with a couple of my other favorites. And I thought I would just share it with you again because it's definitely a current favorite in my kitchen. Time for a shop update. September and the start of October were very uneventful in my shop. I wasn't feeling well for quite a few weeks and I also had some supply issues with leather so it has been super quiet in the shop. But I finally have some things that are coming through the pipeline and I am really excited to share them with you. First, I have an everything leather tote bag pre-order available in my shop right now. I just put up the listing this weekend and it should be up on my website for the next week or two. I will compile some orders for those, close the listing, and then those will ship out in about four to six weeks. Sometimes they're ready a little bit earlier, but I like to give myself a little bit of a window just in case. I really wanted to have that listing up earlier in September for fall wardrobes and uh, the winter season, but we were having some issues getting the leather. Everything is back in stock and available now, and so I thought it would still be the perfect time to put up a listing if you've been wanting to get a large everything tote bag for the fall and winter season. This is actually the bag that I packed up and used for my day trip down to the city with friends. I had all of my journaling supplies and a knitting project for the train ride and it is just the perfect size for me. So those are in the shop right now and they will be for another week or two. I am planning on having a leather update later this week that has some carry-all bags some new commuter bags and a couple more bunny bags are being restocked in colors that I'm out of. So I will have a few colors of the carry-all bag, which is the perfect everyday carry for a handbag. Um, it's great for knitting projects. I have this one loaded with some yarn, but it also makes a really nice stationary tote. I have one tucked away in my creative corner by my desk and it has my mini printer in it, my pencil pouches, my most used journals. It's just a really versatile bag and I will have a few of those in the shop later this week. I don't know if I've had this new style 
since my last YouTube video. I know I've shared it on Instagram and in my Patreon videos, but I will also be adding some of my new commuter bags to the update this week. I love this bag. This is what I've been carrying non-stop this past summer. I'm currently using the black plum version, but I also have a mustard one that I love. Um, and I really love this because it's somewhat small and compact, but it fits a ton of stuff. So I've got so much stuff in here. It fits a book. It fits all of my purse essentials, my wallet, my glasses. I've got like a big hairbrush in here. I've got one of my little baby bunny bags that has my makeup in it. I've just got so much stuff in here and there is still room for a small knitting project, a book, or my planner. I just really love the size of this. It has small handles that you can just put over your wrist, but it also has a detachable shoulder strap, which I have found so handy this past summer. I think it's also going to be great in the winter when I've got my big coat on and I might not want to have my bag on my wrist. I've had so many requests in the past few years for items that have shoulder straps and I really love this one. All of the hardware is beautiful. It's made in Italy. It has like a swivel component to it so it's super comfortable and I really love these woven straps. So those will be coming to the shop later this week as well. I do actually have two of them in Merlot in the shop right now, which is also a really nice color for fall. This one has this strap, but there will be a few other colors as well. I will be adding those to the shop later this week. And then I am also working on some fabric project bags. It's been a while. I've had these fabrics on the cutting table for months and months. And I'm finally making my way through the piles, cutting them, starting to fuse this week, and hopefully in the next few weeks I will have a project bag update on my website as well. The fabrics that I have for this update are so super cute. I've been really into reading this year and I found these collections of um, book and reading inspired fabrics. The first one are these library shelves filled with books in a beautiful mint and turquoise fabric or colorway. I love that one. And I also have this one that has um, various tea bags on it, which is the perfect companion for knitting in a beautiful pale lavender and blue print. I love those. I'll also have some denim bags. I'm not sure if I will have large project bags in that batch. I think I'm just going to focus on getting the small ones done first, put them in the shop, then move towards the larger project bags. So those will all be coming out in the next few weeks and maybe next month. And even more exciting, I have found my holiday project bag fabric. It has been ordered. It's actually arrived, but it's not here at the moment. I cannot wait to share this fabric with you. Hopefully the next time I sit down to film something, I will be able to share a sneak peek of the holiday fabric for my small project bags. I honestly think that this could potentially be my most favorite holiday bag that I have ever done. It is so perfect for by the lakeside. It is so perfect for what I do with Vlogmas, you will know what I mean when I share it with you. It is adorable. I'm in love. I've already found all of my zippers. I'm waiting for tassels to arrive. It's gonna be so much fun to put these together. I think they're perfect, and I'm really looking forward to sharing them with you. So I've got lots going on behind the scenes. A lot of shop updates are coming. I do have that pre-order for the everything leather tote available right now. I'll have more leather bags later this week and then hopefully in maybe about two weeks, two to three weeks, I will have some project bags coming and then I'm hoping to just keep them streaming into the shop a little bit more frequently than I have been. It's been 
a little bit of a challenge these last few months to get pretty much anything done. I'm still kind of adjusting to some new routines, but I feel really positive that a lot is in the works and I have a lot of exciting ideas coming to the shop in the next few months as well. And I just wanted to share all of those updates with you. If you are still with me, thank you so much for watching and thank you for letting me share all of these updates with you. Hopefully I will be back in a couple of weeks with some new knitting updates, some finished projects, maybe some new things to start. I am really looking forward to sharing more knitting with you again and maybe some fall and winter inspiration as we lead into the holidays as well. If you happen to be in Rhinebeck next week and you see me there, please do not hesitate to say hello. I would love to say hi in person. It is so nice to see people when I'm walking around the fairgrounds and I'm really excited for just the fall crisp air, maybe some apple cider donuts and saying hello to a few of you guys if we run into each other. So thank you again so much for watching and I will see you next time.